Welcome to the Juniper Threat Labs attack demo series. For this demo, we will be talking about PikaBot malware. This video will demonstrate how this malware emerged in relation to a well-known malware recently disrupted by FBI. Afterwards, we'll show you how Juniper Network's customers can be protected. To give a background this August of 2023, the FBI announced a coordinated law enforcement effort, codenamed Operation Duck Hunt, that disrupted QuackBot. The operation involved collaboration between law enforcement agencies from France, Germany, Latvia, Romania, the Netherlands, the UK, and the US. The FBI neutralized this far-reaching criminal supply chain, cutting it off at the knees. As part of the operation, the FBI gained lawful access to Cockboat's infrastructure and identified over 700,000 infected computers worldwide including more than 200,000 in the U.S. To disrupt the botnet, the FBI redirected cockbot traffic to bureau-controlled servers that instructed infected computers to download an uninstaller file. The U.S. Justice Department announced that the malware is being removed from victim computers to prevent further harm, and more than $8.6 million in cryptocurrency was seized as illicit profits. The takedown did not result in any announced arrests, Cockbot, also known as Qbot, initially started as a banking trojan in 2007 but evolved into a versatile tool for distributing malicious code, including ransomware. Major ransomware families propagated through Cockbot include Conti, Prolock, Egregore, R Evil, Megacortex, and Black Basta. Following the takedown, Cockbot has remained dormant. However, different cybersecurity researchers noticed an increased activity of two malware which share similar behavior with Cockbot. First is the Dargate malware, and the other one is Picabot, which we will talk about in this video. Picabot is a malicious backdoor that has been active since early 2023. It initially arrives as a phishing email using hijacked email threads, enhancing the likelihood of the target clicking on embedded malicious links. The emails were believed to be likely stolen in an earlier campaign that targeted the proxy login flaw in vulnerable Microsoft Exchange servers. Picabot implement an extensive anti-analysis and anti-sandbox techniques to thwart automated analysis in sandbox environments. Picabot communicates with its command and control server. It includes commands to execute shell commands, download and execute XE, DLL and shell code, terminate current process and collect host information such as processes, IP information and user information. In most of its campaigns, phishing emails feature malicious links that direct users to a password-protected zip file containing either a Windows shortcut file, JavaScript, or .hta file. Executing these files leads to the PikaBot malware. Let's start the attack simulation. In this scenario, we have a compromised email thread featuring a link and a password. When the target user clicks on the link, it triggers the opening of a browser initiating the download of an archive file named yu.zip. Upon examining the contents of the zip file, we find a file named tzz.pdf.lnk. It's crucial to observe the double extension, a deceptive tactic aimed at tricking the user into believing it's a PDF file. Let's extract the shortcut file and inspect its contents. In the Windows environment, Shortcut files don't merely serve as shortcuts to applications. They can also include command line arguments. This feature provides users with the flexibility to customize how applications or files are executed. In the context of this situation, the shortcut file may contain system commands, allowing the execution of multiple commands sequentially, separated by semicolons. This includes potentially malicious commands like ping, curl, and run dll32.xe. Upon executing the shortcut file, we initiate a process monitor to gain visibility into what is happening in the background. We observe the ping process running, followed by the run dll32.xe process.
Further examination of the run DLL32.exe process reveals a suspicious ul.log loaded as a module. This ul.log was downloaded as part of the shortcut file command line. It is, in fact, a DLL file, as we can see its imports and exports. Let's now look and see whether or not this attack works as successfully with a Juniper SRX firewall enhanced with protection from Juniper's cloud-based advanced anti-malware solution, Juniper ATP. For the demo, Juniper Threat Labs is using the following setup. We have a VSRX pictured in the center. The VSRX is a virtual SRX firewall providing network security protection. Its purpose is to inspect network traffic and with the assistance of Juniper ATP Cloud to detect malware. In addition to the virtual firewall and cloud-based protections, we are using Juniper Security Director, which is a centralized management system. It is used to facilitate our configuring and monitoring of the VSRX firewall. And we are using Juniper's Policy Enforcer as well. Juniper's Policy Enforcer enforces security policies on endpoints and ensures they comply with corporate security standards. We also have several Windows workstations, each of which is connected to the VSRX. Finally, we have an Ubuntu server acting as the malware download server. Before we proceed and attempt to simulate this attack with Juniper connected security solutions in place providing protection, let's first take a look at the threat prevention policy that we've set up on our security director and applied to the VSRX. To access the policy, we'll navigate to the Configure tab and then we select Threat Prevention and Policies. As you can see, we already have an existing policy in place. Let's further inspect the protections being enforced by the applied policy. For this demo, our policies are configured to block command and control traffic at threat level 8 and above. We've also set it up to block infected hosts at threat level 8 and above. Additionally, We've configured our policy to use ATP Cloud for malware detection. And as you can see, we've elected to scan HTTP downloads and block threats at level 7 and above. This threat prevention policy, implied to the Juniper VSRX firewall, is a critical component of our defenses, protecting our systems against malware-related attacks. It allows us to detect and block malicious traffic, as well as the activity of potentially infected hosts which will then prevent the spread of malware throughout our network in the event that one of our systems gets compromised. With that, let's proceed with the attack using Juniper Connected Security. To get started, we'll connect to our target system via RDP. As you can see, we have a phishing email with a link leading to the malicious archive file yu.zip. When we clicked on that, it opened the browser to download the zip file but as you can see, the request has been blocked due to malware detection. We can verify this in the security director by navigating to monitor, threat prevention, HTTP file download. Here, the file yu.zip is flagged with a threat level of 10. According to our policy we configured earlier, threats with threat level seven and above will be blocked. We can find more details about this file when we clicked on it. And it gives us more information such as behavior analysis, network activity, and behavior details, including the client IP address, the SRX device, and the URL. At this point, the attack chain is already blocked and thus, the second stage cannot proceed. But, for the purpose of showing how SRX can block attacks further down the attack chain, we copied the archive file and extracted the shortcut file as you can see. We will try to execute this shortcut file, but you will notice that the execution of run dll32.exe fails. That is because ul.log in this case was successfully blocked by SRX. We can verify that once again in the security director. Here, we can see that the file with a SHA-256 hash that starts with AEBF is flagged at threat level 10. Similarly, we can also find more information about this malware when we clicked on it. Note that while the attack was unsuccessful, recall that the security policy being enforced on the VSRX locks host network activity, 
when it detects threats at level 8 and above. When we clicked on ATP Cloud Hosts, we can see that the IP 10.0.1.61 is flagged at threat level 9. This threat level score is determined by multiple factors, such as malicious activities by that host including malware downloads and command and control connections. This host then is now included in the infected host's feed. What this means is that this host is now isolated and disconnected from the network temporarily. We can confirm that as we cannot connect via RDP as before. Clicking at this host provides us with more details on why it is blocked. As shown here, the host attempted to download two malicious files with threat level 10. Once the admin is sure that the host or server is indeed free from infection, he or she can first select the host, and then under the Investigation Status section, select Resolved Fixed, which changes the status of this host to clean and exclude this host from the infected host's feed. After a few moments, this host will be connected back to the network again. We can verify that once again by connecting to it via RDP and browsing the net. That completes our demo of Peekabot Malware. Check out more videos from the Juniper Threat Labs Attack demo series by visiting juniper.net. Thanks for watching.